Good morning. Happy New Year. First Sunday of 2024. What are the odds? But you know what today is? TGIS. Thank God it's Sunday. And so those gathered here, uh, those who may be watching on TV, uh, it's a joy to gather on this first Sunday of the new year. Uh, we're also in the season of Epiphany. So this is the, the last Sunday uh, we, we, we keep up. Uh, Epiphany is uh, a reminder of the uh, revelation of Jesus to the Gentiles. And of course, that's the wise men that came initially there. So we're honoring a little bit of that today. Uh, Mira D. Krusky is filling in. Roger had some other things going on today. And her mom is with her today, Leah. So uh, she's up there, and we're glad you're here for the next couple Sundays. So welcome back. Uh, we're beginning a new series in the book of Ephesians, so stay tuned. Let's begin with that great hymn, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise, on page 2. at the top of page 3 with our invocation. As we gather on this first Sunday of the new year, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. How sweet are the Lord's words to our taste. We, we come, come today, today with praise on our lips and in, in our, our hearts. Heart. The Lord's words are sweeter than honey to our mouths. The Lord teaches us with words of wonder. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of silence for self-examination.
holy, gracious, and merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deed of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Diviler and restore me, that I may live each day in peace. By the grace of God, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your family of faith. You daily and richly forgive us all our sins and grant us new life by your Spirit. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we are the forgiven people of God. Be in our midst and enliven our faith. Graciously receive our prayer and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join into him. The people that in darkness sat a glorious light have seen. The light has shined on them who long in shades of death have been. In shades of death have been. To us a child of hope he is born to us a son is given and on his shoulder ever rest all power in earth and heaven all power in earth and heaven jesus reign in us we pray and make us thine alone with the father ever art and holy spirit one and holy spirit one mercy on your O Lord, have mercy, Christ our King. Renew us by your mercy, Lord, accept the prayers we bring. Accept the prayers we bring. The Lord be with you and, and with, with thy, thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Father, thank you for all your blessings this past year. Empower us to live daily the blessing of being a forgiven child of God. Help us appropriate the heavenly wealth we have in Jesus by grace. May we walk closely with Jesus Christ every day this year. Through Jesus Christ, Christ your, your Son, Son, our Lord, Lord who, lives who lives and reigns with you in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, one God, God now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to turn the page for that great hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is Thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, I know near their horses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy
by great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Rank for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine within thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Our Old Testament reading from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. and The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said... Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good. He separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading uh, from Ephesians chapter 1 The portion I'll be speaking is the Word of God for us today, and uh, we'll get a little bit more of it in Ephesians as uh, the book we'll be starting the new year off with. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing given the heavenly places in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Jesus, every day Keep us in the narrow way And when earthly things are past Bring our ransomed souls that last Therefore ever may we sing Alleluia to our King we continue on the next page, the top of page 7, with our Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey, and this was his message. After After me me comes comes the one one more powerful powerful than than I, the straps of whose whose sandals sandals I am not worthy worthy to stoop stoop down down and untie. I baptize baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth and Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. 
And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior, and happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious Father, what a joy it is to gather as the family of faith here on this first Sunday of the new year. You've got a word of God, the, the book of Ephesians, to uh, nourish us as we start this new year so holy spirit open our hearts and minds to the truths of your word today that we may live life to the full for our lord and savior jesus christ and it's in the name of jesus we pray and all god people said amen Amen. and amen you have the outline there on page 10 if you'd like to follow along Uh, i came across uh, three boys were bragging about their fathers after school. The first dad, or the first boy said, my dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper. They call that creative writing or a poem, and he gets $50. The second one said, mine scribbles a few on a piece of paper. They call that a song and music. He gets $100. The third said, that's nothing. My dad does the same thing. They call it a sermon takes eight to collect all the money. (laughs) 
Well, <coughs> physical wealth is important, but Paul wants us to appreciate our spiritual wealth. And that is the theme of the book of Ephesians, spiritual wealth. We already read the scripture this morning, but in verse 1 and 2, it says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, or to the saints gathered here today, faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, for more than two years, ministered to the church at Ephesus. And then about a decade later, he's in a Roman prison, and he wrote and penned the words by the Holy Spirit that God wanted them to know, as well as us today in the 21st century. Now, the word apostle literally means one who is sent on a mission. And you look around, we too are to be apostolic. We're sent on a mission, are we not? Uh, We're to live life to the fullest. We're to declare the praises of Him who called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. We're called to be people of the gospel, to bring good news of Jesus Christ to the bad news world of sin and death and all the darkness that's around us. The issue isn't if we've been given a mission The issue is how missional will we be in 2024? We're all part of that mission. Then I love the word saints. It means those who have been set apart. Yes, we have St. Paul and we have St. John, we have St. Peter. Well, you didn't know I'm called St. Chris? And you put your name in there. There, There's St. Bunny and and St. You know, just put, put your name in there because we're saints We've been set apart, we've been adopted into the family of God by grace through faith. Now think about this, we're saints by position, not by uh, personal merit. So there's nothing we can do to be, uh, earn our position. And we'll, we'll explore more of that as we go. So let's, uh, let me just give you a snapshot of the book of Ephesians because it, it'll get us started today. Uh, It was the wealthiest city in Asia. It was the largest seaport seaport of that time. A quarter of a million people, 250,000 people lived there. I did my vicarage in True Light Lutheran Church in uh, Chinatown, Manhattan. 18 million people live in Manhattan. Way too many people for me, but you know... That's a big city. And so you can imagine all the hustle and bustle of the big city of that day. Uh, Theaters and public baths and a a large library. They had paved streets. They had every kind of... uh, There were many temples to the pagan gods of the day. Uh, The theater seated 50,000 people. And of course they had races and athletic contests. And we know what that's like in the... Uh, as we get closer to playoff football and you know our sports that we enjoy in our time period. What I find very interesting, though, today the ocean is now six miles away from what, what was a harbor. It's just marsh, marsh, and the city does not exist in the 21st century. And what does that remind us of? It says the things of earth don't last forever. Only what's invested spiritually will last. You know, stuff of the world here today, gone tomorrow. It was also known as the city of love. It was one of the seven ancient wonders of the ancient world. Is where the Greeks had built the largest pagan temple. It took up two acres. It was a spectacular building. But it housed the image of the goddess Artemis where the Greeks believed fell from heaven. And if you read in um, Acts chapter 19, uh, Paul is preaching the gospel there, and it says, uh, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Uh, Men of Ephesus, doesn't all the world know the city of Ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great Artemis and her image which fell from heaven. So right there in the Word of God describes what what they thought about. Uh, Pagan worship, 
the Christian church had to be light in the darkness. A Greek philosopher said the people's morals were worse than animals. So imagine, it wasn't love of the true God, a neighbor, but it was love of the flesh, love of, of self, uh, love of, of the things of the world in which they worshipped. Have, things haven't changed much. But the third thing, I call it the believer's spiritual checkbook. Uh, because um, the, the scripture in Ephesians describes the riches of God's grace, the riches of His glory, the riches of His mercy, and the unfathomable riches of Christ Jesus. As Paul was writing this book to the people of that time period, many weren't very wealthy, many were probably poor because of they believed in the true God. And so Paul wanted to remind them that they had heavenly wealth by grace from our wonderful God. And when they would read this book, that their eyes would be open to say, Wow! I'm rich in Christ. Say it with me. Wow! I'm rich in Christ. I don't believe you. One more time. Wow! I'm rich in Christ. That's true, isn't it? We're wealthy. We're rich in Jesus Christ. Reminds me of an angel appeared to a uh, dean, uh, president of a, a, a college, and uh, wanted to bless him for his faithful servants. So the angel said, the Lord's going to reward you with infinite wealth, wisdom, or beauty. Without hesitation, the president said, wisdom. Done, the angel says, and disappeared. Now every head at the meeting is looking at this dean, and it's quiet, he's, he's kind of has a glow about him. Say something. He said, I should have taken the money. You know, wealth does not last, but only the spiritual wealth invested in eternity. And so Paul is saying, since we're rich in Christ, we, we should not live like a spiritual pauper. So let me, let's look at four characteristics of the rich, and that's an acronym to help remember uh, the book of Ephesians and to explore God's Word this new year. The R stands for remember. The psalm says, I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. Why does the Scripture say over and over, remember? Because we forget. And so let's remember this year kind of the, the content, the, the simple outline of the book of Ephesians to help us remember the truths. Three words, sit, walk, and stand. Chapter 2, verse 6 says, uh, we're raised up with Christ and we're seated with Him in the heavenly places. See, that's our position as a believer. We've been baptized in Christ. We've received the grace of God. We have faith and trust in Jesus and so right now, our position is a loved and forgiven child of God. It describes what we have in Christ. And so that, that's part of it. Then our walk. It says, um, Paul encourages Christians then and today, walk in a manner worthy of the calling. And so the latter half of the book describes the practice of the believer. How are we to spend the, the riches of of God that we have. What do we do? So if our position is in Christ, and so heaven is our home, that's where we're going, what do we do with the wealth that God's invested in us today and tomorrow? And then the last chapter is to stand. Stand firm against the schemes of the devil. That's our protection, how we can be overcome Satan, the world, and our flesh. So that's a little simple uh, outline of the book of Ephesians, position, practice, protection. Uh, remember the, these great truths. How do we live in the power of the resurrection daily? Newspaper publisher William Randolph Hearst invested a fortune collecting art treasures. And one day he found a description of valuable items he just had to own. Well, after others researched it for, for months, they discovered what he wanted was in his own warehouse. He forgot he owned them. So, Lord, give us grace to remember the daily riches we possess now. 
The I stands for invest. The psalmist said, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. There was a songwriter some years ago by the name of Jim Croce. He said, if I could save time in a bottle. How many know you can't save time? It can only be invested. See, I don't know how you used your time in 2023. 2023 is gone. I don't know how you've used your time this first week of 2024. All that's gone up until now. But the time God gives us, we're to invest and use it wisely. In fact, we have 168 golden hours each week to uh, invest and to uh, be available. <laughs> like one grandmother rode her Harley 30,000 miles. She went to every state capital and asked, why did you do this? She said, sometimes you just got to get off your duff and go. So um, God calls us saints. Get off your duff in 2024. Go for Jesus. Joy is what we have when we invest in the things of God, in people, and also ourselves. So yeah, God, others, yourself. And so I just want to focus on uh, on you. Uh, Maybe you like to read. Read a book. Maybe you enjoy art. Do art. Maybe you enjoy music. Listen to it. If I mention the word golf, I know that gets some of yours attention. Play golf. Whatever God's blessed you with to enjoy, please enjoy it fully. Maybe there's something new He wants to teach you or something new He wants you to learn. Be open to that. Question. Who is one person you can invest your life into this year? One person, that's all. Now think about this. Some of you here right now are going through a tough time. Some of you here right now are maybe in pain, feeling lonely, concerned, or whatever is going on in in your heart. But when you invest in someone else, it doesn't matter where you are, you may discover they're worse off than you. You may discover that uh, as you invest yourself in someone, God will pick you up. I discovered that truth when uh, in um, my first call in Rangeley, Colorado. I was, as a young pastor, first call, going through a very, very tough time. And one couple, God had me visit faithfully every week. Uh, you know, some days were just a struggle to even go visit. Lord, am I even supposed to be a pastor? And So th- that first few years were kind of tenuous well at our second call I got this incredible note and they said thank you for visiting us every week for you do not know uh, the blessing of those visits what that meant to us I was just floored and so it God taught me something so in other words if you can't remember that remember what the grandma said sometimes you just got to get off your duff and go for Jesus Um, count It says in the book of Ephesians, redeem the time because the days are evil. Now, the Greek has two words for time. Kronos, which is clock time. This isn't what it's talking about, but it's kairos time, which is opportunities that come our way. Now, tomorrow we'll have more hours, but we never may have the same opportunity again. Now, I used to remember being in my office in, in the congregation, sometimes people would come in, and in my younger years, that was a distraction. But I, I learned over time, those were holy moments. So you might be seeing me sitting, in, working at my office, and someone may pop their head and said, uh, I don't mean to bother you, but you got to uh, say, come on in, uh, I'm, uh, come on in, you're not bothering me. Of course, unless I'm eating dark chocolate, then you'll have to pause till I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, But it's holy time. It's an opportunity to invest in that moment. You never know what uh, opportunity is going to become available. There was a time management expert was teaching a seminar for executives. And they had this big jar. It was clear. It was open on the top. He put in eight large rocks and asked, is the jar full? Everybody nods. Then he puts in some smaller rocks. Is the jar full? Yeah. Then uh, he put in um, uh, some fine sand. 
is a jar full and they didn't know what to do with it and they poured water in there and finally the teacher said well what's the lesson what what are you learning from this little illustration one of the students said well no matter how busy you are you can always put more things into your schedule he said no unless you put the big rocks in first they'll never fit figure out what the big rocks are for you so I thought about that so what are the big rocks for the people of God for us as Christians well love God with all our heart soul and mind love our neighbor as ourself and there's all other kinds of truths in there but you know God and family uh, what are those big rocks well the spiritual foundation is always what we build off of but then there's also other little blessings to enjoy along the way the rich look for ways to make the most of every opportunity and to make it count so we remember we invest we count those special moments and the H is for happy or I call it humor one of my favorite scriptures Proverbs 17 22 a cheerful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up the bones and I was interesting to see that um, a cheerful spirit scientifically improves health but those who with a wounded and negative spirit can ruin your health of course we know the foundation of all joy and cheer is the cross and resurrection because we know we're a loved and forgiven child of God we know we're going to be with Jesus forever the best is coming so out of that personal relationship with Jesus Christ we have the foundation and we just keep building on that grace we just keep building on that faith he gives to us I don't know about you but there's a lot of people probably that you know that have crushed spirits and they need the medicine of a joyful heart to encourage them now I discovered in India they make laughter a form of medical therapy and they have laughing clubs I don't know if we have laughing clubs in America but they do in India in the 1990s in Bogota Colombia uh, there was a lot of road rage and so the uh, mayor did something very interesting he dressed the traffic cops in clown costumes and that did the trick well you know uh, this chaplain goes around with what we he calls heavenly humor you know that well by now and since it's epiphany I, I love the little first grader who um, came to grandma and grandpa guess what I learned what the gifts the wise men brought the baby Jesus and his family grandma and grandpa say what were those he said gold Frankenstein and humor free medicine for today don't it doesn't cost anything I want to close with a true story before we pray you've heard this before but Dr. Norman Cousins was on the medical staff at the UCLA School of Medicine he had a strange rare kind of disease it destroyed the connective tissues of the body doctor says it's terminal there's nothing we can do but that wasn't going to stop him he exercised regularly took high doses of vitamin C and did something very 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 unusual uh, I'll tell you that next year oh no no that yeah, that would be too long what what he did was he watched Marx Brothers three Stooges movies and all the cartoons he could find for hours each day he'd laugh his head off and here's what he discovered 10 minutes of hearty laughter gave him one hour free from pain he'd watched it over and over again and as he made finally well, one of his last checkups the doctor said we don't know what happened but as far as we know you're completely cured he lived another 20 years wrote a book anatomy of an illness and I quote he said your mental attitude the cheerfulness or lack thereof has a great deal to do whether you get sick how bad you get sick whether you get well and how quickly you get well well I want to know God thought of it first a cheerful heart does good like a medicine here's a challenge should you choose to accept it keep the outline don't put it in the, the uh, bin back there I'd like you to take this home with you keep this outline put it in your Bible as we reflect on Ephesians the next several months and then um, 
remember the, the outline and just keep digging in as you read the Word of God. Please read Ephesians. as It's a short book, so you could read it weekly if you'd like to. But may your daily prayer be, thank God I'm rich in Christ. And I don't know of any other better way to get 2024 started out on the right foot. Amen? Amen. I invite you to turn the page for our prayers of the day. We close each petition with, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, please call um, Jerry Hain for prayer requests, or you certainly can call me in these days, but Jerry uh, uh, Hain is the uh, prayer coordinator for our community, so see her uh, for prayer requests as well. And would like to give you the gift of a flower after service, okay? The, we call it the big poinsettia giveaway. Now, I want you to know, all these poinsettias here are yours for the taking. You remember what uh, God said to Adam and Eve? Eat of any tree you want to, but don't eat of the knowledge of good and evil. Take any one you want here, but do not take them from up here because we want to uh, try and... Uh, in, uh, adorn the altar a little longer so these are good for the taking right on the steps but do not do what not from the altar for the chaplain will hunt you down just kidding and if you forget I mean it's it's a gift so just wanted you know we want to keep this going for a few weeks longer all righty um, please join me in a word of prayer we pray Gracious Father, we praise you for allowing us to enter another new year by your grace. And as you uh, allow us to dig into the truths of Ephesians, open our hearts to the spiritual wealth we have in Jesus and to appreciate all our blessings by grace through faith. Lord, in your mercy. Your word commands us to pray for those who are in authority. And so we, we pray diligently as we're, we'll be in the, an election year that... Uh, certainly now for President Joe Biden and Governor Mike Parson. But Lord, whatever your plans are for our country, we already ask that you pave the way by prayer for our country. Lord, in your mercy. We're so grateful for those who support our, our nation so we can live free. And so we pray your hand of grace upon our armed forces, the policemen, the firefighters, and medical workers. Uh, just lift them up, Lord, in your mercy. In the midst of all the bugs on this side of heaven, we pray a hedge of protection of, around our community and families and that our, we may experience health, a, a, a blessing of heaven in the new year. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we live in a world of darkness. There's a famine and unemployment and mental illness and injustice and war and all the other things that are dark. Satan prowls around like a roaring lion to seek whom he may devour. But you've given us protection. You've given us the shield of faith and your grace. And so we pray that in the midst of the darkness of our world, we would pray and see the light of Christ just be shine in the darkness. Lord, in your mercy. And so we pray a special blessing upon the church of Jesus Christ, represented here and throughout the world. Raise up um, teachers and pastors and missionaries, people of God, to go forth and make a difference for the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for our staff that serve us here, and uh, we pray for our Bluffs uh, residents and, and families. Uh, extra blessing upon Lynn, our ED. Adam, our CEO, and just our, the, the blessing of the community in which we live, we th we're so grateful. Lord, in your mercy. We especially pray for those who are mourning Lord ones, uh, mourning loved ones, especially the families of uh, Fred Adams, uh, uh, a wife of Fred, who entered his eternal, who she entered her eternal rest this week. George Vitz, husband of Patricia in. Uh, uh, memory care and assisted living. Our dear friend from uh, Lindsay Pickens, uh, Stephanie, the granddaughter of Mary Totten, uh, Jackie Crammy's uh, father, Ed, who entered his eternal rest at 102, 
and Mary D. Kruski's father, John, husband of Leah, just wrap your arms of peace and love and comfort around them. We stand on the resurrection life. And so encourage us knowing the best is coming. Lord, in your mercy. And we especially pray for Janine Weedman's sister, Debbie, who has some serious health issues as she's in the hospital. Uh, for Mary Totten, extra strength as she recovers at home. Ella Hyam's daughter, Angela, healing from a skull fracture. Barbara Lane's niece, Julie, with uh, stage 2 of pancreatic cancer. Joan Walton, and others who may be on our heart and mind as we bring these saints before you. Open up the, the joy and contest and healy grace of heaven. Whatever they need, you have that grace for them. And as we come and receive the body and blood of Christ, increase our faith, increase our awareness of your wealth in our lives that we live every day in 2024 by grace through faith and gratitude. Whatever other prayers in our heart, we pray the prayer you taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We join in singing the invitation to the Lord's Supper as we sing it a cappella to uh, sing to the Lord of the harvest. The Lord is with His people, now may He be with you. The Lord is with His servant, may He be with you too. Our thankful hearts now raise Him, to God we lift them high. Tis right to thank and praise Him, who to His world draws nigh. The Lord's Supper is for Christians, members of the body of Christ, who know they're sinners saved by grace through faith in Jesus alone. Do you believe the body and blood of Christ is present in, with, and under the bread and wine? I believe this bread is your body and this wine is your blood. Do you wish to receive the many blessings of this sacrament? I wish to receive forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and salvation. Open my heart to the truth of Jesus' words poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until He comes. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night He was betrayed, took bread. After giving thanks, He broke it, and He gave it to His disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is My body given for you. Do this often to remember Me. In the same manner also after supper, He took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often to remember me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. For our communion distribution, uh, after we, uh, as we sing Lamb of God, the communion team will commune up here. When we fi finish singing Lamb of God, we invite you to come down just put your palm out so we can put the host there. And when you're finished with the cup, it's on the side. If you're not able to come forward, we'll come out to you. But please raise your hand so no one is missed if you're not able to come forward for communion. If you would like a blessing, rather than to receive, cross your arms. We'll have a prayer of blessing for you. Everything is ready. We join in as uh, communion team come forward. Lamb of God.
would be the body of Christ. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ assure you you're a loved, forgiven child of God. Go in his peace and joy. Amen. I invite you to come forward as we sing the hymns in the bulletin. The race is on. The race w. is on. The body of Christ died for you. <laughs> Flow of the body of Christ for you. <clears throat> Bob, the body of Christ for you. Jesus for you. Yeah. 
Continue at the top of page 15 with our blessing and hymn of thanksgiving. As we've received the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may that love and that grace, that forgiveness, nourish you with that heavenly wealth to go forth with joy, peace. Amen. Amen. With joy we sing. sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great the art how great the art and sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great the art how great the art Together we pray. Heavenly Father, these days and weeks to come are your gift to us. We are grateful for all your undeserved grace showered on us daily. Continue to bless us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Holy Spirit, fill us each day with the love, joy, and peace of our salvation. Let us live each day to the fullest through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. For our benediction, by any of our friends here who may be able to transport our care center residents back home would always be a blessing. And don't forget, down here on the altar, uh, the steps, please get a flower as well. The good Lord bless and keep you. Lift up his shining face. With favor look upon you and grant eternal peace. God, Father, Son, and Spirit, most gracious, one in three. 
be praised throughout creation and to eternity. A citizen, they called him Jesus, he came to God, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know oh, he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day, I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's fight, no war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he reigns because he I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because no he holds the few and life is worth the living just because he lives.